Well, hello everybody. Happy Friday. My name is Michael Woodside and I'm an animator who's going to be teaching you how to draw Miko today. So uh, first things first, I'm going to start cleaning my hands. Our tools are kind of gross. They've been in our art drawers for a while, so we want to make sure that we clean our hands before we start working with them. Uh, for those of you who might be wondering who this class is for, uh, this is for anybody who wants to learn how to draw. You don't have to know how to draw because we go slowly and uh, I teach line by line, shape by shape, how to draw these characters. It's also for anyone who knows how to draw and is just looking for a distraction right now from all of our self-quarantining. So I'm gonna get started by doing some circles with my first pencil. This is this blue, uh, just a regular color pencil. And then I'm gonna do my final line with this black pencil. <clears throat> Nico's great because he's just kind of a black and gray character, so we don't need to have too many different colors, but I like working with a blue pencil to start off with. So I do these warm-up circles and when I do them I move my whole arm around and uh, that helps me get fully warmed up for the drawing. So if I were just using my hand and fingers that's really not working all of my drawing tools and I, I like rotating from my arm fully because that gives me the most consistent line and I can also work on bigger shapes that way. So it is Friday and the weekend is right around the corner. Hope you all are looking forward to that and finding ways to make your weekend feel different than your weekdays somehow. Um, I have an idea today. I'm going to try to call a friend and see if we can say hi. So stick around to the end. Should be fun. Okay, so the reason why I use two different pencils is that I can go back over with this black pencil and then do these final lines. And once I do that, then the blue lines kind of go away. You can't really see them. And all of the focus kind of goes to these shapes. And especially once we start coloring in, which we're going to do for Miko, then you really don't even need to erase the lines. You just can get away with separating like that. So we're going to draw, because it's Friday, the whole body of Miko. Uh, I'm going to put him kind of on this side of the page because he's going to be facing over here and his tail is going to be coming out this side. So some shapes that we need to know to start off with are his head is a circle. And that circle has some triangle lines on the outside just to be prepared for these shapes. And then his body is a rectangle. And then his tail is like, if you think of a, you know, the traffic cones, think of a traffic cone that's like on its side over here. So it's, it's kind of like this triangle that's flat on one side and then kind of rounded, kind of a pudgy tail. It's not, it's not a, uh, you know, sharp triangle. So even though we have some sharper shapes, we're going to soften those edges. And that's why we're working with this blue, because that'll help us kind of build these shapes as we go. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna draw, he doesn't really have a lot of hair so we can make his head kind of high to the top. So I'm gonna draw a circle right here. And you can see how scratchy my circle is because I'm just, just getting started. And I'm re <clears throat> reworking the sides of it so that I can keep it, <clears throat> keep it rounded. Looking for areas where it gets really squared off. I get choked up when I draw circles, guys. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with his um, perspective lines, and that'll tell us where the triangle that we do on the sides needs to go. So I, I made this little ping pong ball with lines on the sides of it, and that tells us kind of in actual three dimensions, how we're gonna draw our character. Because everything that we draw, even though it's on a flat page, <clears throat> we're thinking about it as a dimensional object. So Miko is gonna be looking over here and then maybe a little bit down. So these are sort of the lines that we're gonna be drawing on this circle. So I'm gonna start that right here. I hope you all have liked this new camera angle all week. Um, it's been Great way to get consistent lines and consistent view here. 
And so for this line, I'm just gonna go kind of like the ping pong ball, as if it were in the middle. For our music today, I've got actual music from the Pocahontas film, the score from Alan Menken. A lot of the scores that we listen to are Alan's scores, and they're always really, really powerful and uh, feel like the film. So it's great to go back to them. Cool, so let's go ahead and start these triangle lines. So I'm just gonna really roughly draw some lines coming from the top of the circle out to the side, thinking that these, this line is probably gonna extend out to it. And about where it does that, I'm just gonna draw some lines that go to the bottom of the circle. So mine is, it's not perfectly straight, it's almost a football, if you think about it. The bottom side is a little more rounded than the top. So we're gonna try a different thing today. Normally we work on the face and then we build the body. I wanna make sure that we have enough room for everything. So I'm gonna start the body. So the, the rectangle that goes underneath this body is actually pretty wide. So I'm gonna start it here. And the rectangle, it's not gonna be straight up and down. He's kind of leaning this chest forward, so I'm just sort of pulling it back this way. And I'll do the same thing on the side. This rectangle is a little bit bigger on the bottom than it is on the top. And then you can think that that connects behind his head, but the head's in front, so we don't need to draw that part. Okay, so let's get his feet on the ground. This foot's gonna be the easier one because it starts at the corner of the triangle that we created. So I'm just gonna draw a straight line out to the side. And then we'll get those toes going. So toes are kind of up and then back. He's got these really narrow, cute feet. The supervising animator for Miko is this guy named Nick Ranieri, and he's done a lot of great characters. He worked on Lumiere before this. He's also the animation supervisor for Hades and Hercules. And then if you saw Princess, nope, yeah, Princess and the Frog, he was the supervisor for Charlotte, Tiana's friend, the girl that loves the big pink dresses. And uh, even before that, one of my favorite un, uh, kind of unsung Disney movies is Emperor's New Groove. And he animated Cusco, both when he was the prince and the, the llama. So let's get his knee. He's got these really, if you think of it in like, like baggy pants, he's got this knee that kind of like hangs really low. So it's like a kind of a J that connects from the front of the rectangle down to where the foot connects. And then the other foot, let's have it pointed at us here, kind of at the side. So towards the left side of the triangle, but not, or sorry, the rectangle, not all the way over. Just gonna add this shape here that's like thinner here than it is here because it's at us in perspective. So if you think about like a board, two by four on the ground in perspective. It's thinner here than it is here because this part's closer to us. So it's like that. And we can give him his little toes, these little curvy lines. And then to complete the baggy pants look, I'm just gonna kind of give him a little rounded line there and then connect the knee. Now he wouldn't be a raccoon without his tail, right? So we have to draw this shape here that we practiced. So I'm just gonna 
bring that out here and then flat right back to the body. Okay, so now we know that Miko fits on the page. You have a little bit of extra room out here, so let's give him something to do. I'm gonna have him, he loves those little cracker cookies that he gets from John Smith, so I'm gonna draw him holding those. So I have his shoulder here, and I'm kind of just really lightly making these indicated lines. So that's our V here. I'm gonna bring this down into that space. So raccoons have these great little human hands and these tiny little wrists. So that's why we're making the arm a little shorter here than it is here. So we can give them it's almost like they're wearing black gloves. I'll draw the where the cookie ends up. So it's a little circle. And so the way he's gonna be holding that is his hand's gonna kind of be up like this. It's this hand. So it's gonna draw from the end of the wrist to straight up and then a little finger. So these are great shapes to practice if you're unfamiliar with them. Over on this side, this is kind of our doodle zone. So you can draw these little finger shapes. And a lot of times the finger shapes are kind of like the letter D. It's a straight line and then curve line underneath that. See the D right here? Little D right there. Little D. So these are all going to be colored in black. So you can sort of do whatever you want within there to help you get those shapes. <clears throat> get the other hand in there. D shape. And then we can group these other fingers together here. So we figure out how this arm connects to the shoulder. So I'm just gonna draw a simple swoop line from the rectangle to the cookie. close off the glove here. So that's what this line is here. It's the same as this, it's just behind the cookie. And this just connects to all this. Okay, that's different. We normally go pretty far along with the face, but I, I wanted to make sure we got enough room for the body. And we do. So next up, let's go ahead and start the face. Uh, the first thing I wanna draw is actually we're gonna start with his, uh, he has these shapes around his eyes that are really helpful in describing where the rest of his head goes. So the first thing I wanna do is starting on this horizontal line to the left side of the center line, I'm just gonna draw kind of a rounded line up towards the top that follows the same path. And then from there, this part's easy. We're just gonna connect it to the outside of our little football shape with another rounded line. So you mentioned all the characters that Nick Ranieri supervised. Those are the 2D animated characters, but he also supervised when uh, Disney started making computer animated films. So he supervised the character of Buck Cluck, who's the dad in um, Chicken Little. I'm gonna do the other side, kind of the same thing, rounded line on the right side of the center line. And then he supervised the character of Lewis in the Meet the Robinsons. 
So see how it's the same kind of, it's almost like these lines are connected in the middle, rounded out to the side. So within this shape, we're gonna kind of branch off, like peel off from the top line here. We're gonna do it all on this side first and then we can copy it over to the other side. And then there, we can go from here to the end of the horizontal line, this horizontal guideline that we drew. That's why these lines are so important for us because they really tell us so much about how our character is gonna be built. So we do the same on the other side. And the horizontal line goes out farther here. So we wanna connect it to that. Got really furry cheeks. So we can show that fur by right above this area, kind of doing some triangles to give us some separation of the hair, just in this zone. So now that we have this area, we can start putting the nose in. So I'm just gonna start with here, kind of a diagonal line this way. And then a big C shape. We talked earlier this week about all the different shapes that we would use, circles or S shapes, both directions. Yeah, that's an S pulled and up and down. And then C shapes are really useful, which are almost circles, and then straight lines. So a lot of these shapes kind of build into each other. And we can build overlap with those same ideas. So these are great shapes to practice. So that's our C shape. I wanna give the mouth somewhere to go. So I'm gonna draw the mouth corner over here and Miko probably has the longest cheek line from any character we've drawn proportionally. So he's got these really long lines that kind of go out to the side here. And we're going to see where the mouth connects to this corner. So I'm going to draw another C shape here that's on the left side of the center line. And then one more reverse C shape that's kind of pointed up there. You start to feel his cute little nose. Cool, so now we can draw his little actual nose, which is kind of a rounded triangle. It's rounded on all the angles. So there's that. I don't wanna go all the way down to the bottom of our C shape, so I'm gonna go right above it and then over there. So now he's got a great big open mouth because he, he wants to eat. So I'm going to draw a big U shape that goes down to the bottom of the circle. It comes right back up here. So let's give him his bottom lip. jaw, little jaw down there. And then also a tongue is another stretched out C shape. Cool. We're about done with uh, the under drawing. I just have a couple more details I want to add. So let's start with the ears. He's got these little triangles on top of his head that are a little rounded. So I like doing the more straight line here, and then rounded line there. And I'm gonna do some extra lines to help us when we're coloring it in. So I'm just gonna 
draw another line like that, and that helps us know that this part's a little darker than this part. And then the inside of his ear is another one of these shapes. That's going to be the darkest part. So the other ear should be on the equivalent side of the head over here. So I'm going to make it right about there. Rounded and then flat. Yeah, a little too rounded. There we go. And then this side of the ear, we're not going to see the back part. We're just going to see the inside. Got these also these little tufts of hair up here. So I'm just gonna do some quick lines. If you've done hair like that before, it's just you can practice these shapes over here. Okay, and then now we're gonna do some details in the chest just to round these shapes out a little bit. Kind of has, if you see him from the front, he has like a V of white hair right there. So that's what we're drawing from this angle. Like that. So think about it from, it's like a triangle that's from the side. So it's a little straighter on this side and then rounded over here. All right, now that we have everything except for the eyes done, I think we should do the eyes. You know what, one more thing. We're gonna show some dimensionality to his tail. So I'm gonna add four curved lines over here. And this is another color separation thing, so we know how we're gonna color it in differently. Fourth one right there. Detail here. Let me show elbow hair. Okay, now we can do the eyes. So the eyes are like long, tall ovals like that. And I'm gonna draw pretty close to the inside of the innermost triangle. on the other side. And I want him looking right at that cookie. I'm gonna put his pupils right down there. And let's have him take a bite out of that cookie. So we're just gonna draw a little shape like that. Little teeth marks. Okay, that's Miko. I wonder, actually, which one makes this a little taller. Yeah, I'm gonna give him a little bit more space for his eyes. Again, we're, when we color it in, I'm gonna see it. So we're gonna go even higher. You probably did yours right. I'm just gonna make a couple quick corrections of mine. We talked in the past about being a perfectionist and that will only get you so far. So I like always checking mine, fixing it. All right, I'm going to start outlining, but you know what? Let's go ahead and try to make a quick phone call before we do that.
Well, hello, star of stage and screen, Kiala Settle. Sure, 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 sure. How are you today? I'm good. I'm in my car. Yeah. Currently waiting to be seen uh, for my little fur baby uh, to get into the bed. Okay. Um, but she's good. She's in the back. She's hanging out like nothing's wrong, which makes me happy. Yeah. Makes me not stress. That's good. Um, but yeah, I'm hanging in there. How are you? You know, I'm doing all right. I'm doing some doodles. You want to see? Yeah, I do. Just started it. Trying to call me. Hang on just a second. Let me get out the door. Sure. Miko. <laughs> Just starting to do this this outlining. I was gonna I'm gonna put you down here. It's not that I'm okay. not here. But it'll be working. There we go. It's so nice and sunny out there. I should go outside today. Yeah, it's kind of beautiful. So what are you doing to to stay sane as you're you know locked up all the time? You know, it's um it's kind of been a blessing in a weird, bizarre kind of way. I mean, this pandemic has done so, has pretty much altered every single living person's life internationally. And um, a lot of people are out of work. Millions of people are out of work. And um, so I had the opportunity almost every other day, thankfully, to uh, be a part of a podcast or be a part of um uh, a virtual concert or record a song that's being put into a big video that's being released uh, for several different organizations that are helping in the COVID-19 relief fund. That's great. Uh, in so many areas, like small businesses, um, the Actors Fund, yeah. um, which also helps not only actors on Broadway and the crew as well there, but also in all aspects of the performance uh, industry, uh, both in film and television and their state and their sound crews as well. So it's, you know, a lot, it's been a big privilege and, um, it's nice to not have to deal with, you know, I love my managers and I love my agents, but the fact that I can actually just say yes, because the need is there, um, is a godsend. And it's, I can't believe they ask me. And of course, every time when I do get that privilege, I say yes. That's so cool. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen a couple of the concerts that you've done um, for the Actors Fund and they they are, they do so much good for the world. I think it's it's amazing how, how much we need it and we realize it when we see it. Yeah, and I realize it when I get to do it. I, I'm understanding that I am not on the front lines anywhere near them. And I wish that I could be, I wish I had a skill set that would put me, quote unquote, in the trenches or, you know, be working for UPS or, you know, for FedEx or even at the grocery store helping these people bag groceries when, you know, they, they still have jobs, but they are also risking their lives to do it. Right. And um, all I can do is open my throat, hey. but I will gladly do that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think people need a break from all of it as much as we need help during it. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been... I'm proud of you, Michael. Well, thank you. <laughs> I love that you're doing this because it's not only helping and giving a release, but it's you're teaching. This is this is valuable information that you know. Back, a lot of people, even back in Walt's time, you know that that's how they got to do this. They would you know pull up to the side in an office, not in a pandemic situation, and right, kind right. of go, hey. You want to work on this with me because you're available and you're my buddy and I don't know if you can draw, but let's see if you can. And if you can, let's make Pirates of the Caribbean a ride. You know what I mean? That kind of yeah. thing. I mean, it just starts off so simple, like what you're doing. And I think it's awesome. I love it. People might not, people probably recognize you from Greatest Showman or Broadway, but they probably don't know that you are probably the biggest Disney fan that has ever lived. I'm such a big Disney fan and I'm about to say it. That I actually moved from LA County on March 31st I know. to Orange County. That's how big of a Disney fan I am because I wanted to get as close as I possibly could without illegally setting up a home 
or shop, setting up shop at Toy Story Parking on Harbor Boulevard. I tried to get as close as I possibly could to Disneyland within reason. Um, but yeah, Disney is between uh, the Sherman Brothers and Clive Davis. Both of those um, those groups of people they were and continue to be the soundtrack of my life. I got to see <clears throat> I got to see Kella in a concert honoring the Sherman Brothers, and she's saying it's a small world after all. And I have never heard that song sung so emotionally with so much passion, and like actually hear the words for what they were, and not just sort of the joke that that song has become, but, but the, the message is... And originally it was written. I mean, yeah. Small World was written as a ballad. Right. And sort of as a, as a plea to band together. And uh, ironically enough, those times will never, never not be around, especially yeah. now, yeah. you know, now more than ever. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we're while I draw these, they usually have music on in the background, and we've been listening to the score for Pocahontas, which is beautiful. There's it is! Of... It was, when, I, when it first came out, I remember I couldn't not sing it. I was always singing it, all around the house, washing dishes, making my bed. So, of course, making my bed was like a 30-minute thing, because sure. I would keep singing the song over and over and over again. <laughs> Kayla, stop doing your chores. <laughs> I, but I What's your what's your favorite Pocahontas song? Uh, my favorite Pocahontas song is Colors of the Wind. Even as I say the title, it's because it's such an emotional time right now. And a lot of the time, all I do is get on to um, these, uh, these concerts and these uh, benefits that I get to do for uh, those that are being affected directly by COVID-19. Sure. Um, and just start bawling because I wish that I could sort of take their pain away and help them or, you know, do anything that I can for them in front of them. And I know that this is probably the only safest way that I can do it. And I will gladly do it, gladly. So every time I think about songs like this, especially like Colors of the Wind, um, uh, it gets me there. So I kind of have to breathe and go, calm down, Kayla, calm down. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. We're going to get through this. going to make it. Would you mind singing a little bit of that song? I'm sure people would love to hear it. No, I would love to. <laughs> and I'm going to dedicate this to Nick Cordero, hmm. who is a buddy of mine. He's a Broadway actor uh, who is currently fighting for his life uh, at Cedar Sinai. He's been there for almost a month, and hmm. he's been asleep for almost a month. He's already lost um, his right leg due to uh, coronavirus. COVID-19 and the amazing doctors at Cedar sinai that consistently go through these pop quizzes of medicine every time, you know, a patient comes in and they do everything that they possibly can within every single moment because each patient is different. And so this goes out to them and this goes out to any and all of the children that are watching. Don't ever, ever, ever give up. Uh, on dreaming. Don't. Please don't. Because it's those kind of dreams that you have that um, change the world. Uh, so I'm going to sing Colors of Wind. You think I'm an ignorant savage. You've been so many places. I guess it must be so. But still I cannot see if the savage one is me. How can there be so much that you don't know? You don't know. You think you own whatever land you land on. The earth is just a dead thing you can claim. But I know every rock and tree and creature has a life has a spirit, has a name. You think the only people who are people are the people who look and think like you. But if you walk the footsteps of a stranger, you'll learn things you never knew, you never knew. 
Have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon? Or ask the grinning bobcat why he grinned? Can you sing with all the voices of a mountain? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Come run the hidden pine trails of the forest. Come taste the sun sweet berries of the earth. Come roll in all the riches all around you. And for once, never wonder what they're worth. The rainstorm and the river are my brothers. The heron and the otter are my friends. And we are all connected to each other in a circle, in a hoop that never ends. How high does the sycamore grow? If you cut it down, then you'll never know. And you'll never hear the wolf cry to the blue corn moon. For whether we are white or copper skin, we need to sing with all the voices of a mountain. We need to paint with all the colors of the wind. You can own the earth and still all you'll own is earth until you can paint with all the colors of the wind. Yala, come on. Come on. <laughs> You can't hear it, but people are screaming and clapping and crying all over. Thank you for, for singing that. Thank you for asking me. And thank you for, in asking me, reminding me how important this is to connect in whatever way yeah. and with whoever we can. Because we are all the same. Yeah, girl. We are all the same. Well, thank you so much. I hope, I hope your dog's doing okay. Thank you. I hope so too. Well, have a good weekend. Thank you, baby. You too. All right. Say hi to Brittany. We'll see you around. Talk to you later, babe. Bye. Bye. Well, that was crazy. And the timing was perfect. You know what? You guys should call your friends. You never know what can come from it. She's the best. I think magically we did it so i'm just going to go ahead and sign my drawing right here and i think with that we have our miko i'm going to wash my hands and dry my eyes can you imagine being someone in that parking lot <laughs> walking around and then hearing her sing like that amazing okay well I hope you all had a great week uh, drawing some really happy, fun characters together. Uh, don't forget to share your drawing. This drawing with Woodsy hashtag is really helpful for seeing how other people's drawings have turned out, for me to share your drawings, and uh, to take a look at everything at the end of the day. It's also fun on the weekend to see all the drawings of people catching up, so I look forward to seeing everyone catching up on the drawings from this week during the weekend. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful week, and uh, remember, call somebody. You never know what can happen. Call your family today, call a friend. Just spend a couple minutes FaceTiming. Uh, I think we all need it. So remember, just because we're separated doesn't mean we have to be alone. And I thank you for spending your time with me now. Uh, I hope to see you next week. Bye now.